to have a five minute presentation. Thanks, Robert. You get to <laughs> share your proposal in five minutes and also listen to everyone else's proposals and give them questions for five minutes. Right, okay. Let me repeat that for everyone who just joined. Can you hear me? Yes. Welcome, welcome. If you are a proposer, you get an opportunity today to present your idea for five minutes and to be questioned on your idea for five minutes. Um, what's going to happen is that we're here to celebrate all of the diverse ideas in Cardano and in Project Catalyst. And we are recording this room so that we will put your recording on the IOHK YouTube channel so that in January, is it January 6th, Robert? When does voting open? Close enough. Robert, you, you're muted. I am too. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not too sure actually, I, uh, but about the 6th is about right. Um, voting opens first week of January. Um, so all voters will be able to see your video uh, and get to know you, get to know your story, get to know, as Felix was just saying, why they should vote for you. And it's put on record uh, for now till the future. And you can refer people back to that video and say, this is the video I, you know, won or did not win. <laughs> and also use that for the future. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'm from the team review team, so we actually have three proposals, where, but we're trying to compress this in one slide. So could it take uh, a little bit more than five minutes? About The, the rules are everyone oh. gets 10 oh. minutes. You get five minutes oh. to present whether you've chosen one proposal or seven, and you get five minutes for people to ask you questions about it. And just so everyone gets a chance, um, oh. we do it in that way. So it's going to be tough, but oh, good luck. Okay. Yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> as, as Are there any other questions? Yeah, as Felix suggested, said, is basically try and give in your presentation what things uh, wouldn't necessarily be uh, something that they can read in your proposal already. So that's why we can fit it into to five minutes on that side of things here. Okay. All right. So. Um, do we want to kick this off? Is there any other questions or any um, anyone's got any quest more questions before we get started? Um, Am I on the rules, uh, Robert? Are you, sorry, what? Uh, am I on the, do you have me listed? Am I there? Yes, you yeah, are. You are, yeah. so, you are okay, indeed. I just want to make sure. Yeah, uh, so we've definitely got you in here. We've got Mike and we've got you, Tim and we've got the Viet core team. So just three three okay. presenters today uh, for five minutes, uh, ten minutes total. Okay, so who would like to go first? Do you want to, uh, Mike or Tim or uh, who wishes to go first? We I can just pick, or someone can go. Okay. I, I can go. I can go first. Tell me how long I have. You have five minutes, and I'll be starting the clock. And uh, so tell me when you're ready and I'll kick the clock off and I'll hold you to it. <laughs> Absolutely. Would you like me to put up my hand like this if when you have one minute left? Please. Yeah. That would be very helpful. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me right. try to get my, my uh, lighting so I look good here. <laughs> <laughs> and do you want to, you can present your screen or anything else like that if you want to, if you've got any slides or anything. Do you want to do it? Okay, sounds good. I'm ready. You're ready? Okay, right. Off you go then. You've got five minutes. Okay, great. Yeah, so um, my, my name is Tim O'Brien, and I'm a co proposer for a proposal in. Uh, the nation building DApp part. And um, I have two partners who I've, I've known for a long time. One name is Jonathan Coe. He's a, a thought leader in uh, international trade and particularly paperless trade. 
and that's the topic of our uh, proposal. So we've got two other people here. One uh, guy is the former CTO of SWIFT. And if you've been in the finance world outside, I've been going through SWIFT for a long time. And uh, so it's a big payment company and he's an advisor for, for uh, payment. And the other guy is a friend of mine, uh, Gerhard Eschelbeck, who's a former uh, head of security at Google and who I've known for a long time. So, so we have an excellent team. I'll tell you a little bit about what motivated the project. Um, this is a supply chain. And for those who are not familiar with supply chain, supply chain uh, is how you track goods. Like if it's a farm supply chain, you can track from the farm on the truck, to the warehouse, then maybe a packager, and then you put it on a ship, and the ship takes it to the customer, and finally you deliver it to the consumer, to the market. Now, I've been working on a last mile supply chain in Ghana for uh, since Fund 5, and there's a particular uh, bottleneck, and that's when you cross a border, there's a lot of paperwork you have to do. Like, a sort of paperwork. And there's a solution to this, and that is uh, digitizing the paperwork. So rather than having somebody there signing and stamping, you basically have a, a uh, digitized uh, paperwork. And there's a, there's a company working on this called Trade Trust. And they're out of Singapore. My co-founder works with them intimately. And the, the uh, trade trust actually has like over a thousand organizations and governments across the world. So they have customers, but they have a problem. A problem is they're running on Ethereum, which means it's very costly to use. And they have a lot of throughput. They have over a thousand transactions a month and Ethereum won't support that. So me and my partners have reached out to trade trust and said, well, let's move you to Cardano and then you will have all the advantages of low fees and low transaction costs. And you also have our network where we're going to go to Afri countries in Africa, countries in South America that actually want to move to paperless. Uh, paperless documents actually decrease the cost by over a half and in increase the, the, the time or reduce the time by half. And they're also mandated by the United Nations. So these countries want to join. We want, uh, they're active. They know from the UN, they've been mandated to go paperless, but they don't have the resources because it costs millions of dollars to build these paperless systems. So we're building an out of box, thank you. We're building an out of box platform that lets people, lets these countries just drop in and they have paperless, uh, paperless transactions. And the final point is that now we actually, the next step is to remove these bureaucratic jobs that take 50% of the revenue and then remove the middleman costs and return it in our case to the farmer. So thank you for your, thank you for listening and uh, if you're, I'd really appreciate your vote. I think this is a, 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 a cause that will have great impact in the challenge. So thank you very much. Thank you for presenting, Tim. Um, that's, that's amazing. Uh, I'd love to know a bit more about your team. Did you say somewhere in this room or what did you say? So we have uh, two teams. So I live in Vietnam and I have a company in Vietnam. So we actually know the problem very well now here because I live in the Delta region. And like we have 4 million people whose lives depend on rice farming. And, uh, but currently because of climate change, they have to migrate to other ways of farming. So we're doing a last mile supply chain uh, for these farmers here. And we're also working in Ghana 
So I have uh, 16 members in Ghana and we have uh, working with like five farmers. And what we're gonna do is work with these farmers, build their soil, take them to, uh, uh, take them to the market, so do everything. But the final goal of that is to, to have the farmers sell to the final marketplace in the US or in the UK. And in order to get the product there, right now we have to go and deliver to somebody who knows how to do all this mounds of paperwork. So the team there and the team here is trying to say, well, how do we remove that? And digitalizing the documents is the first step. Sorry if I took <laughs> a long time answering. No, uh, Dimitri's got a question. Dimitri, do you want to ask it? Uh, yeah, so how does it make money for, for you all? How does it make money for the people who are implementing it in country who have to go through the work of, say, like you said, in producing it in African countries or whatever? So how does it generate revenue for the Okay, the first thing it's going to do, when we, uh, first of all, uh, one of the problems with uh, countries in the developing world, and, and it's certainly here true in Vietnam, that it takes so much time to ship uh, that, you know, it's a problem with dealing business with first world countries. Like if I order a laptop from the US, it gets here in three days and it sits in customs for two weeks. So, the first thing is to lower the, the barrier with trading with international, with uh, countries in Europe and, and the US. The second phase, which I think is going to be huge, is we're gonna, with digitized documents, we can actually then auto process them. So we have the documents along our supply chain. We don't take them to a port in Accra where we had somebody called an agent who then packages them and then fills out the import export, the bill of lading, uh, like 20 different documents, a spe very specialized task and takes out from the supply chain, uh, maybe 40% of the revenue. So if you, if you think of from the farmer to the market, the far, uh, if it product is like a mango that sells for $1, the farmer may get three cents, the, the shipper may get 20 cents, the, the import export person who knows how to do this, this uh, paperwork may get 40 cents. So uh, by removing the middleman, it opens up a large fees. We can go around the packager, around the agent, and that means that the farmer then can realize from $1 maybe 25 or 30 cents, we hope. Anne, you've got your hand up. As, uh, you've got one minute left, uh, by the way. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Um, I'm wondering whether you are um, aware of what's going on with the international labor, um, not ITO, trade, the trade, WTO. Um, because like in Kenya, Kenya, they have ratified that convention. Mm -hmm. And the convention is ratified for international trade, and we have the single window solution, oh. and there's a whole a whole trade trade portal. So okay. I don't know whether you've seen that or how you relate to that and how that connects with this, because it's a huge conversation um, in this country yeah. concerning the that trade portal, and we have a website up and running. Awesome. But my question is always, what does the ordinary pe person do with that information, and how does that help them? Yeah, trade is, they've gone all the way down to even the officer on the ground who you can deal with and their name and number there. I wonder whether those names and numbers work. So I'm just mm -hmm. curious to know um, how are you interacting with that whole um, WTO effort to uh, make very, the trade open? Very, very good question. So uh, my partner, Jonathan Coe, if you look at his background, he actually is the implementer of the single window. He's like the world authority on single window. And he implemented it in Kenya, I think a year ago. But he also worked in the Middle East and, uh, and uh, Singapore. So yeah, single window is a big part of this. And we are That's moving amazing. to Kenya. We're, awesome. we're already moving 
Our next step is Kenya, and our next step is single window. So very good Kenya, question. Kenya is huge on that, and there's That's a lot enough. going Thank on. You. There's a lot of conversations. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. We've already just gone over the 10 minute mark. So uh, great. Can, can we carry this on before, uh, after these idea fest would be absolutely great because I'd like to hear yeah. about this, Tim. So I've also put his um, proposal in the, in the chat. Yes, I will place it in the chat. And anybody, feel free to reach out to me and I may actually take down your name and reach out to you as well. So I think it sounds like we're very... Uh, aligned here. Cool. And for all the questioners, please keep in mind, try to formulate your questions as short as possible <laughs> that we have the time to answer them. Yeah. Answer is good. <laughs> uh, okay. So who would like to go next? Uh, the VIC core team. How about you? Is that correct? Uh, you're uh, wanting to present? Yeah. You've got on the list here. Are you ready to go or? Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. Can can I share a screen? Yes. Uh, because I have a PDF yeah. PowerPoint. Okay. Right, if you uh, get that up, and then I'll start the timer uh, based on that for you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can you see my share screen? We can. We're all good to go. So, uh, do you want to set that going? Get it all ready. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll give you five minutes starting from now. Okay, hello everyone. I'm Wang from VidCore team. And uh, right now we will bring out to you the proposal name uh, Project Ev Evaluation Website. That's uh, our team is uh, vcoincheck.io, like, like this behind me. Okay, and um, the problem here uh, we want to solve is uh, you can see in the blockchain right now, we have a lot of project and uh, you you can see we have a lot of scam project with a great marketing contain because they they focus on the marketing to uh, to reach to the uh, as much as people they can to show them about the, the 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 project so they want to steal the money from everyone so we see we have a lot of scam project out there and the second is uh, a lot of people in our community they don't know how to uh, uh, evaluate a project is good or not because they don't know uh, what is the most important thing in a, a good project and a scam project they have to 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 get away and uh, number three is uh, we have a, a lack of uh, multi-dimensionals multi and objective information because like, like I said before a lot of scam project they want to uh, marketing so much they're so good at that so they just uh, go everywhere and they say good about them but they actually a scam project so that's why we want to solve that by uh, vconject.io that's a website to uh, evaluate uh, the project to uh, everybody can avoid the scam project and they can invest their money in the good project so how so how how we do that so how we do that we make a question set with a lot of question you can join to the vconcheck.io to uh, to to answer the question some basic question like overview established day country blockchain platform what's their mission vision and what is uh, the project intend to do what problem they want to solve or who did it uh, like example like when I see uh, uh, the, the Cardano, I see the Charles Hawkinson, like uh, example like that, and I believe in him. So we have to fo figure out a lot of information to know whether they are a scam project or not with a lot of uh, questions like that. And you will answer the question to know that's a scam project or a good project. And uh, by the way, uh, who we are. We are a VidCore team. You can see the name of, uh, of us. And we have done a lot of uh, videos to sharing to the community of Vietnamese about uh, a lot of project in uh, in Cardano blockchain and uh, in another uh, blockchain platform like uh, Solana or a lot of uh, uh, pro project will launch uh, next time in the Cardano like Sunday, Genius U. Yeah, we do it a lot and we're sharing with the community about uh, the, the, the project is what is good and what is bad uh, about that. And um, how, how do we know, uh, when we, we have a lot of questions, how do we know uh, what is good project or scam project, is that right? We don't know. Uh, we, we, so that's why 
we have a lot of uh, like a signal, like scam project usually have a signal to recognize. Example, like some, uh, some scam project will say, hey, I will do sticking mechanism, uh, sticking mechanism, but they actually do a landing or borrowing. And we can see like that if we know a little bit about the information about the, the blockchain or the knowledge about the blockchain. And number two, uh, we don't de determine the, 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 the content on the, the website because everybody will come to our website to answer the question by themselves. So that's why the content of the website is from everyone. We, we, we don't post the, the, the content. Everyone will do that, Com community will do that. So that uh, information is so uh, objectively and diverse. So, uh, uh, so that's why we, we always said to my uh, investor is you have to take responsibility for your future finance. And the best way is get more knowledge and more information from a, a lot of source, not, not by the, the, the project uh, give you, okay? So, we have a lot of uh, here, yeah. but I think we don't have enough time to say. And if you have time, you can join to our link uh, of uh, our proposal, and you will uh, see that, and you watch that, and you can give our uh, give us a question. Yes, thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. Yeah, I have linked your um, proposal below in the chat. Does anyone have any questions? About five minutes for questions. Has anyone got any at all? Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll have a few. So um, I'm just trying to understand here in terms of you've got two appear to be two aspects to the uh, website design. One is a series of questions to for the investor to figure out whether or not a site is uh, scamish or a project is scamish uh, by stepping them through a set of questions. Uh, but also the ability, am I correct, for someone to be able to then look up an existing web, uh, project and see whether or not it's scamming. Is that correct? Uh, uh, can, can, can you say the, 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 the question again? Uh, two questions. Uh, one is yep. uh, people, uh, coming to your site and answering questions to assess yep. if it is a scam site or not. And yep. the second bit is that they can find uh, effectively crowdsourced information about the website. Is that correct? Yep. Correct. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what prevents someone from uh, putting up scammy information about their own project? Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's right. Okay. Uh, yeah, like, like you said, because this is contained from the community. Everyone can put the content on that. They, everyone can answer the question and then they can put the fake information in that, is that right? Yeah, that's, that's a big problem. And how, how we solve that? We're gonna have a, 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 a lot of like a rate one star to five star from air for air, air, any assessment in our website. And uh, in the first round, in the, in the beginning, we have to do it by hand. Our team will check first because in, in the first, we don't have too much evaluation in, my, in our website. So that's why we can check it by hand. But uh, in, in the next round, in the next round, we're gonna do is like um, some, uh, we're gonna give some benefit and some uh, punish, punishment, benefit and punishment. When you do it, the scam uh, uh, information is fake information. Uh, the community will, will figure out that. And by the way, if you give a good information, the community will give you a reward. Like uh, if, if you just uh, give a uh, fake information, your reputation will low. But if you give a good information and community knows that, they will give you a reward and uh, the star and you will be rare, uh, you, your reputation will higher. And next, the, your evolution, uh, ever evaluation, next your evaluation about a project will be better than the people try to make a fake information. Okay, John, do you want to ask your question? You got your hand up. Yes, so you mentioned about people can submit their responses and their evaluations. Uh, how do you stop bot like kind of swarming in either destroy a coin or promote a coin yeah that's right uh, like uh, like you said 
uh, we are a platform like uh, Wikipedia. You can see that that the same that the same uh, mechanism like uh, Wikipedia. Everybody can write uh, write on that. Even bot, even uh, like that. Or um, we uh, we gonna figure out we can use the capture or uh, some uh, technique to prevent that. But uh, like you said, if the, some people they they try, they try to make a scam. They try to make a fake information. They will have a lot of way. But you see, the Wikipedia is uh, still alive, right? Like right now, yeah. So uh, I believe that uh, the the amount of people, a uh, good people out there, is also enough to uh, we balance with that because this is open for everyone. They can change, they can uh, put their information, they can put their ID on that. And uh, I believe in that if we have enough, the community, big enough community, everybody will, everything will balance. And uh, the people join to our uh, website, they can uh, evaluate by yourself, by themselves to understand what is good and what is uh, not good because uh, information is a lot. And, our website, it's like, like I said to you, like uh, here, you have to take responsibility for your future finance. That's mean we just public, we just give you information and you have to choose and you have to filter from all the, a lot of view of information, good information, bad information, and community will help you to, to, to bring that to you and your, 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 uh, your ability, you have to have ability to check for your few, uh, future finance because no one done that for you. Yeah, so we just uh, pro provide uh, the, the, the information. And uh, by the way, hey, we hey, try hey. to make it uh, better every day. Okay, yeah, actually. Yeah, cool. Thank you so much. That's time. Keep your questions for afterwards because there's uh, a yep. few questions that people want to have. So maybe after uh, the next round into the session, keep those questions around and people can ask you for them. So thank you very, very much. Uh, yeah, thank Mark, you so much. Uh, the last person up is Mike, I think. Uh, yes, Mike, uh, if you'd like to. Uh, that's probably me. Yeah, cool. uh, so if you want to stop uh, um, sharing your screen and let uh, Mike, do you need to share the screen at all? Mm, yep. I, yeah, let, yeah, let me try to figure out if this is working. Uh, whoop. Okay, and, yeah, I'm ready, and then I'll uh, tell, tell me when you're ready and then I'll start the timer off for you. Ah, all right, this is, <laughs> there we go, there we go. Okay, ready? so I'm ready. Yeah. Ooh, five minutes starts now. Ooh. So, um, hello everyone. Yeah, my name is Mike Dietrich. I'm a Plutus and Prism pioneer and a musician, a teacher, and a cultural scientist. And I have started the Edutainment Collective at the start of this year. Yeah, Edutainment is really just a collective of international and interdisciplinary people. Um, and we are de dedicated to creating tools and game-based learning applications for the Cardano ecosystem. And we already got some funding um, for the seed concept phase of um, our language learning game. That is that one. So um, this is a play to learn and earn game for language learning. Um, so our game is an MNO, meaning that it can support hundreds of thousands of people playing together in, this, in persistent worlds at the same time. Um, we start with 14 languages, 14 that we think are of uh, special importance for Cardano. And these are, you can read them at the, at the top, but I read them out. It's English, standard Chinese, standard Arabic, French, Spanish, Russian, Indonesian, German, Hindi, Portuguese, Swahili, Amharic, Oromo, and Japanese. And yeah, each language has its own world that is built and inhabited by the community. And each world is also governed by its DAO, and which is formed out of first language speakers and high level players. And this DAO, uh, they moderate and regulate their world together to ensure quality content and shape it to the liking. Like you can see it like here, the little islands, all the different languages. And yeah, at the center of our um, of our concept is really game based learning. So, and because we believe that digital games are actually ideal learning environments, and 
Good games are designed for active learning because nothing works without you. If you just stand there, nothing will happen. Everything is only there for you to create your own story, not like in a movie where it just keeps going. Um, you can navigate with your own avatar in a clearly structured world or subject and follow your own path and interest. Uh, so you can set your own pace and repeat anything as often as you want without having to face possibly life inhibiting consequences when you fail. So failure is not a bad thing in games, it's part of the way. Uh, in games, you can also explore different possibilities and outcomes and experiment in a safe and guided space, which is often really impossible in the real life. Um, good games are also extremely good at creating intrinsic motivation, not, ex not extrinsic, that is, if you get a reward, but intrinsic if the motivation is you want to do it yourself. And this is really the most crucial factor for prolonged and self-directed learning. And yeah, and also you get immediate, immediate feedback and you can clearly see your progress. So um, we, yeah, our, design is, 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 uh, our game is designed to share the learning, learning experience in a social and inclusive ecosystem that crosses cultural and national boundaries. So you can practice, meet and create or play together with, with your friends or strangers. And that's, that means you also always play, find someone that, uh, that you can practice together with and you do not need to find a tandem somewhere on the internet and pay them, but um, yeah, you just find them in, in a, as another player. Value, as we are a blockchain game, um, we are play to earn, but also free to play. And meaningful participation and contribution it gets rewarded with the game currency, which is also our native token. And yeah, we make this magic happen in that we redistribute all the revenue streams. So we all the revenue streams are, get exchanged to ADA and they get put into a treasury. And this treasury serves as a, yeah, like a reserve where you can redeem the, that value with your native tokens. Um, we also have several versions of virtual land inside the game. So for example, rep reputable DAO members get assigned a plot of land for free and that they can build upon or rent out. And yeah, some public land also gets auctioned off in regular at the intervals for a set period of time to, yeah, to prevent monopolies. And community is really, as we said, the, at the core of the project. All content and the value is created by the community and um, it's also managed collectively. So each world needs to form their own language team and that is what's happening right now. And yeah, that is re responsible for the, for the content creation. Um, these get rewarded in a fair share of the initial token supply. And edutainment is only building tools and support structures like intuitive editors, guidelines, and best practices to, en to enable and empower as many users as possible. Cool. Extra time, Mike. Um, so yeah. five minutes up. It goes too really quickly, doesn't it? Yeah, it goes too quickly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, well, uh, open up Dude. to uh, questions. You've got five minutes for questions. Yeah. Uh, John, you've got your hand up. So... I think that was a legacy hand. <laughs> okay, fine, fair enough. Dimitri, you've got uh, some uh, comments in the chat there. Did you have any questions? <clears throat> Dimitri, no? Other than just offering for your kids to, to play test it from the sounds of it. Uh, <laughs> any other questions? Question. Yeah. Um... What sort of uh, stories are are being based in your um, game? So um, I think the main story is it's, it's not it's not clear yet, but uh, we yeah we try to make one main story to gather all the different worlds in one, and that's that's probably that you lost your language and you need to acquire it again, and so you start at the very low level and cannot speak and talk with anyone about anything and with where as you progress through the game you get better and you get harder content and at the start it's really easy and i think that's the main story you lost your you lost your voice and you need to regain it and yeah the, and really the other stories that really comes down to the communities and what they want to do and what they want to create so i for example had some ideas for 
for having like a rest a restaurant mini game where you where you need to be the waiter and run around on the tables and get the right food to the right people and have a good conversation like you would do in a restaurant and not and not insult them or something because then you get a lower score and yeah that is one of the ideas i have but there we have we have a huge list of level ideas so um and sandbox games, because it's a sandbox game, they actually live from community created content. So, and so we cannot say what is, what are these stories yet. And you've got your hand up. How would you yeah, like to ask a question? Yes. Yeah, I'm, it's a reaction really. Um, I think it really excites me. I love your name, Eddie Chainment. I love it. It's a very good name. Thank you. Um, and I really like what you're doing. For me, it's always about the users on the front end of the inventions that are being brought out. And so the inventions are totally fascinating. And what I do is experiment them on the ground with the least likely people um, to see how that works. And um, I look forward to using this actually on the ground and giving you feedback on stories. That, like Angela is saying, we do need some stories and some voices to plug into this. Um, whole ecosystem and so I look forward to that so for me it's just a reaction really not a question okay. Evan do you want to ask a question yeah. actually for me it's not a question I just wanted to add on top of that my name is Evans I come from Tanzania and our local language is Swahili so just in case you need support with Swahili translation or make Swahili stuff I can be of help I definitely come back to you <laughs> right now. Yeah. <laughs> like, another, another, another thing is my PC is a battery is about to die and we don't have power here and I have a presentation to make. Um, I don't know what can I do. My battery is very low. Um, yeah, I don't know how we connect. Um, oh. uh, just you want. Hmm? Oh. I, I think we can facilitate that. Um, yeah. In terms of connections and the country. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's, 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 it just broke down. It looks like, damn it. So I have a, a question for you. Uh, is there any other, anyone else from the room uh, that wants to ask a question? Yeah, I, I, I have a, I have a, two questions. Yep. So um, first, uh, first, I've asked, have you actually got kids to play your game and see whether it works as a game? Uh, not just as a, another way of trying to teach a subject of language, uh, because my my kids hate learning the local language because it's extremely difficult and boring for them to learn it. Uh, but they are very good at playing games, uh, like they play Minecraft all day, and <laughs> another game called Roadblocks. So Roblox. they, are at, yeah, mm -hmm. they are very good at. They are very good at. They will very well sniff out and see whether your game is actually a game, or whether it's some sort of another boring way of teaching a subject. So they will, my, my, my eldest son is giggling here in the background because he will, he is quite aware of this uh, thing. So what I want to know is, have you actually uh, got kids who will play your game and evaluate it as a, as a game, as, in, as actually immersive and entertaining? Yeah. yeah. Because my, my kids yeah, are quite uh, capable of doing that. And every kid of that age group is going to easily know whether it's a game worth mm -hmm. playing or whether it's yet another just a subject of learning. Right. Yeah, I, I, I totally understand. Um, I think uh, because that's a big uh, problem. And uh, because when you think about game and learning, you often just think about gamified stuff. And then you add a score and you add some, yeah, some reward, but it's not really meaningful. And then uh, that's a game for you. No, it's not. So we really are time, trying time to be a up. game. Yeah. yeah. Time is and, up. So thank you, Mike, for that. Um, and that's good. We'll carry on uh, afterwards. Uh, so those are the uh, presentations for uh, Fund 7, uh, the three that you've heard the presenters here today. Uh, Simon, though, I think you don't have a presentation in Fund 7, but you do want to do a sort of test, a dry run. Is that correct? Um, I thought I have a presentation in Fund. So I am listed later okay. tonight. All right. So... Um, Unless I, I got this wrong. Right, that's right. There's your... also two other people. There's Evans and there's Anne. Oh, yeah, we, we kind of we kind of missed it. We didn't get in yet. We had applied for Idea Fest, but we our names didn't appear at all. Oh, okay. I'm just uh, so we've just not had a chance to present ourselves in any way. Right. Okay. So Evans, and are you presenting one as well, Anne? Are you? 
Yeah, Evans seems to have had a problem with his power. I don't know whether he's coming back. Right. Well, do you want to do yours now, Anne? Well, yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll let uh, Anne go go next. And uh, this... mine is really short. Yeah. Because Can I there's... do a shared screen? Yes. Just just because for some people, um, the sign up was used normally for the official idea first. The deadline was Wednesday. Just so, didn't uh, get the communication for some reason. I looked for it and I didn't see it. Yes, I really it did. I looked for it in my email. I looked for it everywhere. It was and announced. I didn't see in, where I was supposed to sign up. It was so announced. Maybe it's just. It sorry? was announced in each town hall where it was included the sign up form also in the after town hall because now we will. I'm totally open that people who didn't sign up have the possibility to present anyway. But what I need um, from you is your email address and the idea scaling to your proposal, which you present. If not, we um, are not able to include the direct links to your proposal in the video catalog. So we are happy to stay flexible. We are happy to stay open. Um, but please, everybody who presents now, please send me directly in the live chat here the idea scaling of your proposal and your email address. Cool and the name of the presenter as well. So name of the presenter, email address, idea scale link of your fund server proposal you're presenting. So we are able to include it. Yeah. Okay. okay. And I understand also there has been some confusion because we have a bunch of idea fest. We have three idea fests over the weekends rolling out. So it's sure there is some confusion, but yeah, we always stay flexible. So don't worry. Okay. Thank you. So if you want to go, Anne, um, we can do that now, or unless you want to hold off for a little bit, and uh, Simon or uh, Min can... I can go. Yeah, you can go. <laughs> Just get it, get it over and done with. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, uh, you've got... Do you need to share your screen at all? Yes. Okay. If you want to set that up, then we can get going. So share your screen. Yeah, I think I'm on. Okay. We haven't got the shared screen at the moment yet. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't gone to share screen yet. Let me just do it now. Okay. Um, you got it? Do you have it? It's coming up. Uh, I'll just wait. Right. Tell me when you're ready and I'll start the clock for five minutes. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. Right. Off you go. Five minutes now. Yeah. So as I keep repeating, um, I keep repeating this, that for me, it's always about the front enders, the people who are in the front of the screen that have to interact with the technology that comes um, to them. And um, I'm thinking about these girls in the last uh, four years, I have implemented a project called the Girl Education Challenge. And there's a girl that I see repeated, a Kenyan girl who if, if actually given an opportunity to code with Haskell, how interesting would it be? And what is the problem? The problem is that Naisula represents at least the least likely person um, to be to be to be to be to be to be included in this world that is really moving ahead really fast. Um, when I look at your kids, your kids are playing computer games already with Minecraft. Naisula has never even seen Minecraft. So, how can she be considered for exposure? And the reason is because, for example, in a country like Kenya. We, our mean age is 19 years old. So if Cardano would, would come to a person like that, at that low level, it means that the scale up could happen and the, and the sustainable enhanced because we could scale it up. Because if you could do it at, at such a tough environment, that means you could scale it up to any environment, so to speak. And so I like to challenge tech all the time to push it to an environment that would be least like uh, and see. Uh, whether we can overcome the issues and the challenges. Because uh, these girls' challenges are, are this 
child labor and early marriages and cultural practices that do not favor her. And she has very few chances in life when there's a huge digital divide. What if we could actually do something about that? And this is an actual maths teacher helping an actual child in programs that I've implemented. And I have implemented these little laptops. So where I would be going back would be to these places where these little laptops are. Each of these children have been exposed to some level of technology. And so we could help them to acquire the skills. The teachers are already there. And so how about we start to improve her employability? How about we start to improve her coding capabilities? How about we start to improve her ability to participate with a wider, with a wider world by setting up these training hubs? And these hubs would be in, a, in school settings and also in the community. And we could start some rudimentary training on functional programming and start to make them think functionally um, and, and um, computationally. And it is very easy to make it scalable once you're able to reach that. So let's pr let Project Catalyst give a chance to these people who are really mostly excluded and let's be able to duplicate this model all over East Africa so that we can inspire this girl to innovate around her own problems and not always have pictures of other people and other nests coming to her. Let's give our skills for the future. Let's create a sustainability for the future of Cardano. So how would we do it? Um, I would like to do it within a period of about four months between February and, um, and August and um, see whether we can push out quite a bit of training in these hubs because I know that this funding would jumpstart a real chain of events. So I look forward to us empowering Naisula through Cardano. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Got six minutes. Question was quick. <laughs> so any questions coming out? Anyone got any questions at all? I had a question. How exactly would it happen? Okay. How exactly would the training happen? Yeah. Um, it would be through, first of all, the training material developments and the workbooks would have to be done. So there's already quite a bit going on. I know there's a lot of active information that's going on within the community. And I've seen, I've been reading the proposals on education and there's a lot going on. So just interacting with what's existing because the innovators are at it, they're working hard. And we've already got the edu chainment, even just assessing some of these already developed materials um, and starting to, to, to develop more that are, um, are um, in line with this group. And then um, inter, uh, stakeholder engagement, quite a bit of stakeholder engagement with government to make sure that we can access these 400 girls in about seven schools um, or 10 to seven, seven to 10 schools in a region that has this marginalization. Um, we would install and um, uh, install Wi-Fi and do the setup. Um, offline and online versions using servers. We have some servers, some little servers. I don't know whether you are familiar with the Rachel servers. We can put some of that content in there that can be available on LAN as well. Um, so where when we don't have connectivity, we may be able to do that. Then we do have the training and sensitization of the teachers. The teachers will have to be sensitized because they are the hand holders of these children. And then we will we'll have to configure and set up the learner devices and set up accounts. So if we are having scenarios where you, the inventors have um, good programs, we could set up accounts mm -hmm. and these children could start using, to start answering the question that was asked, asked just now. What if I have children played with these games? Maybe we can start to use um, these, these scenarios that are already coming up within the Cardano system. Um, and then we'll do the training of the children. Um, and we will monitor and, and, uh, and continue using the teachers, especially the mathematics teachers. Those, were, those would be the ones we'd be working with. Um, yeah, and then we will present these uh, young people for a graduation event around July. Um, and uh, the project closeout would be around August and the post-project monitoring will be towards the end of the year. So this, this should take about six months to a year. Okay, does that answer your question? Yep. All right. Tim. Uh, thank you. Very detailed and uh, Tim, do you want to ask your question? 
Yeah, and, and since I really haven't been involved with teaching young children, this may be a naive question, but I'm wondering, is there, does there need a bridge to be a bridge to sort of like make this relevant uh, to the learners? Uh, yes. Or, yeah, and how do you- Definitely. Like, what kind of things can you like bring along with the teaching material to motivate them and see this is where, what can be done with blockchain? Games, gaming. Okay. Okay, yeah. gaming. So I'm excited about edutainment. Um, I'm excited about the solutions that I'm seeing in gaming. I also have a, um, a proposal for Naisula versus Ada game or Naisula and Ada. So Naisula okay. and her stories come up and Ada Lovelace in 1800 also comes wow. up because they're kind of similar. Um, Ada yeah. in 1800 is kind of similar in terms of the the thoughts, the thought, the mind, the mind of the people around 1800. So Ada Naisula could have some points of convergence, and oh. so bringing out stories, artifacts. These these uh, sculptures are very rich in artifacts. So and NFTs, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and and yeah. and quite related to what we're looking at in the arts project. The art project. Could we do oh. illustrations and stories? So some stories will come up, and it will be fodder for. The game, the 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 edutainment people like edutainment will have fodder for for stories that are relevant, that are interesting, that are fascinating, and maybe game um, challenges that are very interesting. Because let's say a girl has to kill a snake. You know, this doesn't happen in Singapore, but it yeah. happens in in Maasai land. A girl yeah. has to, and she can know. She knows what a cobra is. She'll know what a black rat snake is. Can you imagine a game where the child, there's so much education that can come out of just those children living in their own culture. And yeah. they have so much knowledge from the environment that is never captured. They have so much inherent knowledge. They'll tell you this snake will not kill you. And they know that this snake will kill you and this one won't kill you. And you know, they have inherent knowledge. They, they can smell a hyena. They'll tell you a hyena is crossing just now, you know, yeah. because they, they navigate these very, very complex environments as they're going home from school. And so can you imagine lifting those stories and those stories coming out in a game? Can you imagine a child in Singapore playing that game? That would be exciting, <laughs> I think. So do you have another proposal for that? Uh, I have several proposals that are spin-off of this. Um, the, okay. There's one for a game, Aida and Isula gaming one. I have one for maths teachers. Um, and um, I do have several proposals spinning off from this particular one. It really stimulated my mind when I saw what yeah. come out of it. It's quite can a spin-off. Can you drop yes. a link? Yes, let me put them out on the, yes, let me go to idea scale and put them out. Yeah, thank you, thanks a lot. Thanks very much. Thank you. That's cool. Okay, we've only got uh, two seconds or so left. So um, what I was hoping is uh, we can go on to the next person. Uh, Evans, are you ready to go? Would you like to set yourself up and uh, get ready before we start the time? Yes, I believe I'm ready to go. Yeah, cool. So uh, do you need to share the screen at all? Yes, I need to share. Okay, if you just set that up. And if you could stop sharing, that would be great. And then uh, we'll switch you over. So just while we're waiting for Evans, we've got um, okay, uh, Roman and uh, Simon as well to do things, if I understand correctly. Right, you ready, Evans? Well, it's not quite up yet, so I'll wait till I get it up. Right, now we've got it up. You all ready to go? Yeah. Yes, I'm ready to go. Yes, right. I'm ready. Right. Time starts now. Okay. Um, I come from Tanzania, located in East Africa, as you can see here in the map. Uh, our local language is Swahili. Um, the next language that people speak here is traditional languages. We have more than 100 tribes here. And another language, the third language people speak here is English, and that is for those who are fortunate enough uh, to go to good schools because uh, it's not uh, it's not used commonly by most people. Those who are lucky that are literate are the ones that are, can speak and speak uh, English, most of them. And the population of our country is above 59 million. 
uh, and to introduce more about our country, uh, these are the flag colors of our country. We have green, yellow, black, and blue. Green represents the vegetation, which is covering large parts of the Tanzania. We have Serengeti, where the Lion King inspiration came from. Uh, we have the Gorongoro, Manyara, and the rest. Uh, yellow represents the minerals of our, available in Tanzania. We have Tanzanite, gas, we have gold, and uh, The black represents natives, uh, us, and blue represents the water that the, the area covered by water, which we have uh, Indian Ocean, which is covering this large part here. Uh, we have Lake Victoria, Lake Tanganyika, and Lake Nyasa as well. So those are the meaning of the colors of our, our national flag. Uh, on the challenges that we have proposed on Catalyst, we have three proposals. One is multilingual resources. Uh, the proposal is called uh, Pluto's Catalyst Resources in Swahili. Uh, we're looking forward to translate the resources that are in Catalyst and Bluetooth to Swahili, so as to reach many people. Another challenge that we proposed on is community events, whereby we're looking for to do physical events and online events here in Tanzania, but the ones that are online, that means we could cover even a bigger area, even also people who are outside of Tanzania, but mainly those who speak Swahili. Um, and another another proposal is on the new SPO business opportunity, uh, which we involve our the trading company that I work for, or I am the founder also as well. And here are uh, the solutions and the budget that we ask for. For instance, the first one here, Plutus Catalyst, Plutus Catalyst Oil Resources. Uh, we're looking forward to, we, 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 we look, we have asked for this budget here and that is in here. I'm sorry, I won't be able, for the sake of time, I can't go through all the budget, but uh, when you go to the proposals, you will see them. They have been breaking down all of them. Um, let me reintroduce myself again. At the same, my name is Professor Sanga. I'm a veteran in MLM, multi level marketing. I've worked with different companies, but that's way back. But I got a lot of experience and skills of public speaking there, also networking because uh, the MLM companies uh, used to involve, uh, used to involve referring people to buy products and sell and doing direct selling. I'm also a co-founder and director of RFFX TV company, a business consultancy company that is available here in Tanzania. Uh, it deals so much with uh, financial markets. And I'm also a co-founder and director of NY Studios, a production studio which produces audio, adverts, music. And if the time will allow us, you'll get to hear a little snippet of some of my music because I'm also an artist. I have a Bachelor of Science in Social Protection, attended at Institute of Finance Management. I'm a developer, blockchain enthusiast. I'm also a proposer and a catalyst uh, advisor. Here, below here are the necessary social handles that you can connect with me. Uh, other members of the team, I have Regina Makungu, her CV is there and all the documents. We have Madam Angela, we also have Madam Ain, their CV is there. I can't go in detail about the experience and their CVs just because uh, the time is not friendly. Um, other people that, other members of the team that we're going to work with uh, involves our studio, I mean NYA Studios production that is located here in Tanzania. We're looking forward to produce content, which will be audio, also visual, also graphical context. Uh, we're looking forward to partner with my company as well, which feelings for its company, our FFX TV, uh, whereby to provide uh, the, it will facilitate the training. Hey, so the training. Yeah, that's, that's your time up. Uh, so thank you for doing that. It's a, it's a tough one, the five minutes, so I've got to, keep, got to try and keep everyone to that. So uh, we've got five minutes for questions uh, starting okay. now. So any questions coming through at all from anyone about uh, what Evan's presented? Any at all? I'm just wondering uh, how many people speak Swahili in all okay, these, yeah. across all okay. these... If you if you can see my presentation right now, there are one hundred. I mean, oh, one hundred and fifty million people 
speaking Swahili, and this is the regions that are the areas where the people speak Swahili. Oh, uh, yeah. Tanzania, so, Kenya, Uganda, Burundi, Rwanda, Zambia, Malawi, Congo, North Zambia, and Comoros are the Okay. Yeah, I didn't see that. Thank you. Thanks. Good question. Any other sort of questions? Or, um, so I will pop in. First of all, is like a big thumbs up for um, translating anything to do with Plutus functional programming or anything else like that into uh, Swahili. And certainly, uh, hopefully, you can use what uh, the sort of jobs and uh, work that we're doing in the Eastern Town Hall to actually do the translation. So that would be really, really great to see. Um, how are you think? How are you guys thinking about um, structuring the material, like the Plutus material itself? Where, where are you thinking of getting that from? Um, we have the, 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 uh, the partners among the partners, members of the team. Uh, we have Angela, who's a Plutus pioneer. She's the one who will help us. She'll the one who will be leading the tech part. involved in um, putting that information together. I'm working with IOHK and the education department, um, especially through giving scholarships um, to Eastern Africans and uh, actually Africans and South Americans um, to teach them Plutus um, and Haskell. So I have access to coding um, directly from EB, uh, coding materials directly from EB, from IOHK, sorry. That's cool. Uh, could you just expand what you're thinking of doing with the community proposal? Okay, what we are looking for to do the community proposal. If you go to the to the uh, to the to the proposal, you'll see some of the events that we have been doing, training events where physical. Okay, I think I can also share it if you give me a second. Yeah, we, we have been doing seminars. Some of them usually are free, others are, uh, um, some pe people have to pay to attend. So what we were looking forward to do is do free seminars with the fund that we will get, we are looking forward to do uh, free seminars. Uh, in first, we will start with the big regions here in Tanzania. They, I mean, the big big five regions, which are capital cities, Dar es Salaam, Mwanza, Zanzibar, Dodoma, and Mbea. Those are the regions that we are looking forward to, to, to start with. If you look at the attachment, you see some other community. We have some attachments. Unfortunately, I can't get them on the screen, but we have some attachment on the proposals that you can see the, the sort of the events that we have been doing. There are also videos there. There are physical events, and also we are looking forward to do online events for so that to reach the to reach the people that uh, can't access the trainings physically. And any other question? Any questions from the room at all? Uh, going? No? Uh, so for the SPO and trading, can you just expand a little bit on that proposal for me? Oh, okay, so with the SPO, we have seen the opportunity that is available in the in being an SPO. So with the fund that we asked for, we asked for budget of 30 USD, whereby two, two I mean 20,000 USD, Will be used as a pledge, and the rest will be used to for the team that involves the technical parts and also promoting and educating people. So with RFFXTZ, we have a community of over uh, twenty thousand uh, who are traders in the financial market, uh, and they, you can also see it in the okay. And unfortunately, they can't go through all the screens because of waste of time. But what I want to say is that we will show the opportunity. What we're looking for to do is show the opportunity people are uh, of staking in the in the staking pool and we believe the amount that we use, we use to pledge uh, will open our own staking pool and we will invite people to stake with us so we'll show them the opportunity uh, of staking and it will also be marketed on, uh, on our youtube channel which also has 23,000 subscribers whereby we're also educating people about us uh, educating people about staking also as an, an alternative investment opportunity. Cool. Okay. Well, that's basically about time. So uh, thank you, Evans, for that. Uh, that's really good. Uh, so John, I think, is the uh, next one up. Are you 
uh, ready to go? Uh, yes. Okay. Throw, throw your stuff up and... Let me throw my stuff up. Uh, is it loaded? Uh, yep. Can you see? We, we can see it. So when you're ready, just let me... Are you ready to go? Yes, I'm ready to go. So timer starts now. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm John, uh, just a simple guy with a dream of making a game. And this is Jilly 16C. Uh, the proposal, proposal was aimed at the Asian market. So here's the Chinese logo and the English logo. The game will launch on both sides of the world. So it's not just directly aiming at the Asian market. And what is Jilly's? It is uh, Jalice is an actual system in our universe, but 16C is a, a fictional super Earth-like planet that is four times the size of Earth. Uh, this enables the environment to be very dynamic and unpredictable. And that city presented is called Nightborg. It's a fun city that parties forever. The dome above it uh, sort of shrouds the city in a forever nightfall. And there are so many cities like this will be in the world for the players to explore, as well as other caves, ruins, secret locations, and other points of interest. There will also be battles, as you can see on the bottom left, for players to fight with. And one of the anticipated reward is to collaborate with other games and throughout the metaverse and they will be able to drop like other games NFTs. And these are the four out of six guards, as I would call it, the characters in game that are currently made. There are two more that are being produced right now as we speak. And these are playable characters only achieve, uh, obtainable through the founding NFT sales. So they'll only be unique to the people who get their hands on it first. Uh, this is our current roadmap. In quarter one in January, we're looking to launch the website and offer the first, offer the first round of NFT sales. The, uh, the proceedings of the sales would help build the N uh, MVP in quarter two. And throughout February and March, uh, we look to expand the team to hire the law writers, character designers, environmental artists, uh, looking to also build a community that uh, people to, to get people to discuss about the project. And also I'll be completing the game design document and hand that over into a team that can build a prototype and during quarter two, uh, we'll be sort of taking shape of the world for uh, the community and us to a more tangible uh, product. And within quarter three, which is slightly further away, we'll primarily focus on developing the prologue of the game, shaping the storyline and presenting a demo to the public. Hopefully there will be also be a game trailer that I can showcase. And in quarter four, uh, it might be a very ambitious target to already bring out an alpha for uh, the community to test, but that's what we're trying to aim for right now. And what are we looking for? Uh, the team is looking to look more other NFT games to collaborate with, and also as well as other website components. And we're looking for 33,000 and those are the breakdown of the cost that we're looking to uh, distribute our fund to. Mainly half of them will, most, almost half of them will go into prototyping. The, although if the pro project doesn't get funded, uh, that will still be going ahead because I'm actually really passionate about this project myself. So I'll be still forking out the money to go ahead with that. And on the right is just a work in progress wireframe that I'd like to showcase to the community that that's a website that's working for. Cause I do get a lot of um, feedback saying that there isn't anything tangible yet that people can see. So they are quite a bit skeptical. So just showing uh, what, what is happening in this world. 
And all in all, this game is more of a, there are lots of, already a lot of NFT games out there that are catered to the Western community. And there, because of the Chinese clampdown, there isn't actually a lot of uh, Eastern Asian oriented NFT games. So I thought to bring this into the market and hopefully fill that gap. Oh. Thank you very much. Bang on time there, John. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Bang on, very nice indeed. So are there any questions for, Pete, for for John? We've got another five minutes for that. Tim. Can't uh, find you an idea scale. <laughs> oh, uh, wait, sorry. Let me paste this link, uh, my proposal link in the chat. So to, uh, go ahead, Tim. Uh, yeah, so um, I'm, I'm not familiar with NFTs on, on Cardano. I know the technology, but I'm very familiar with them on uh, Ethereum, and I've done a few NFT sales. Okay. Uh, in, there's a, a concept uh, around NFTs of uniqueness, like the number of pieces and the number of unique features. And we usually go to OpenSea to figure out uh, the number of unique features and also to do resells. So is there a parallel system that we can use for your, uh, to find the uniqueness, to find it, and are you gonna publish the number of pieces? Yes. Resale available. Yes, uh, initially I'm looking to work with a NFT Maker Pro to create the website and also utilize their um, NFT sale function. And yeah. our, uh, initially we're looking to sell 6,000 of them. We don't have to, yeah, we don't want it to be too much because we want to retain the uniqueness of it. And regarding the resellability, uh, there are still a range of websites that I'm still considering, um, but OpenSea is one of them that I'm looking at. Okay, interesting. Thank you. How, how does um, working with OpenSea across into the Cardano uh, NFT space work? Have they got a bridge? They don't, they don't publish one now. They, they have one for uh, obviously Ethereum and two other, Ethereum blockchain and uh, Matic. Uh, but hopefully we can build, hopefully there'll be a bridge soon. Um, any, what, is, any other yeah, what is the age group uh, that you're targeting on the uh, game? Or is it open for any age group? Sorry? Is there a particular group that you target through the game, or is it uh, open for any age group? Is it like curated, or is there any sort of thing Dimitri, that you it's, Dimitri, it's really hard to understand you. Your voice yes. is maybe you can text Sorry. your question in the chat. He was basically asking if it was um, what the rating of the game would be targeted at G rated children, adults. What, what? Oh, yes. Um, the rating would be sort of like 15. Okay, cool. Uh, Tim, you got your hand up again? Or you never put it down? Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. A, a legacy. As somebody, <laughs> cool. Uh, <laughs> right. any, legacy. Other, any other questions? Any, anyone else got any sort of questions going on? Right. Um, right. So is there, in terms of... Um, so I, I like the idea that you're actually focusing on this crossover between um, bringing in Chinese, Asian sort of uh, themes to a game which is more generally available. Um, so I'm just trying to understand, uh, so what we've got up here is your, your rough sort of budget breakdown. Do you want to talk through that a little bit more in terms of uh, where you think, like, what is the character design work, what work you're doing there? Yes, so uh, starting from the top, uh, the law writing, they're actually different from what I researched into, they're actually really different from writing a storyline. Law writing, there are more setting the world for us, like how the world functions and how the world is shaped. And illustrators will be designing the, the world like a concept artist. So they, they are really important to compensate the law writing, the lack of graphical part. Uh, character and graphic designers are people who will put those 
concept into actual tangible shape that people can play on. So those two are really important pieces of a puzzle as well. So before I start prototyping, I'll need these. So these designing aspect to be really on point. And that's what the focus of the quarter one will be. Okay. Excellent. So yes, yeah, the quite the law writing is actually quite important because as Dimitri points in there, it creates the backstory in terms of what's going on. So that's uh, and the interactive fiction writing is quite an art. So that's really good to see that you're calling that out. Okay, well that's about it. Um, so that's the time. So uh, thank you for that, John. Uh, great to see. Thank you very much. Uh, now, um, Min, is it is that correct? Is that how I pronounce your name? Oh yeah. Yeah, that's my name. Uh, do you want to come out next? You're okay? Yeah. Yes, I'm okay with coming next. All right. Uh, can I share a screen? Yep, if you'd like to share the screen, and then uh, we can start the timer. Don't tell me when you're ready. All right, I've got your screen up, so you're ready to go. Yep. Okay, start the timer now. And you're muted, boy. Oh, okay. you're muted. I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you start again. <laughs> oh, excuse me, I am, I'm sharing just one tab, so there is a problem that I can't turn on my mic, so let me share the game on the full window. Thank you. Sorry about no that. No problem. No problem. Oh, can you see my screen now? I've got a black screen. I don't know about it. Loading. Oh, loading. Here we are. Uh, yep, it's up now. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, so hello, everyone. We're from Vietnam. We're the two main reveal team. Uh, just a little bit background. That's, um, we are... We lost them. Um, <laughs> yep. awesome. There's something important to mention, maybe for idea fest. Make sure to have a good internet connection. <laughs> uh, I think we have lost them, Min. So, uh, how about we give him another chance and uh, uh, when he comes back in? So, uh, Simon, do you want to come on up and, and take over for the moment? And we'll wait for Min to come back and he'll come after you. You're good for that, Simon? Uh, yes, hi. Uh, so I'm Simon, um, born in Germany, living in Indonesia. And excuse me, like um, my cognitive abilities are a little bit restricted. I'm up since 4 a.m. last. Yeah, do you want to, uh, can we stop uh, Mins from sharing the screen so that, um, do you need to share the oh, screen yes. at all, Simon? Uh, yes, 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 that'd be nice. Yeah, if you share the screen and then uh, bring up your stuff and then we'll start the timer for you and then you can go. And that way it's yes. being recording. Okay. Right. Just wait for your screen to come up. Okay. Yes. Great. So you ready? Uh, time is yes. now. Yes. Thank you. I'm Simon, uh, born in Germany, living in Indonesia. Uh, this project is uh, about co creating events together, Cardano crowdsourced events. Um, so the problem is there's no easy way for the Cardano Catalyst community and new people to connect to each other, suggest and vote for events to be created. So the so, so solution would be to create a platform that allows anyone to easily create ideas for events, vote for and get feedback and co-create events together. And the relevant experience is we have strong experience in organizing and facilitating community events ourselves because most of us have been living in international communities, uh, eco villages, and have a lot of experiences with like consensus decision making and so on. Uh, what does success look like? So um, having developed uh, the uh, platform and having 30 people that have co-organized or participated in community events that have been organized on the platform. And we are targeting um, uh, people inside the Cardano and Catalyst uh, community and uh, outside of the community and wanting to bring them together. 
So some key metrics for success are number of people having participated in community events, as I just said, 30. Um, numbers of uh, users 100 and then uh, we also have a you know diversity of participants you know from uh, east africa a a asia australasia um, and and beyond that have already um, um, said they're interested in uh, joining and uh, piloting you know and experimenting with the platform then we would like to have like 30, uh, 50 idea events created on the platform and then a total of uh, 300 votes. So why is this important? So this uh, the quote is directly taken from the, the Catalyst. Community-driven projects like Catalyst need organized events to connect, discuss ideas, solve problems together and initiate collaboration. So this project is directly aimed at solving this problem by having this platform um, uh, to to solve that. So how will this project add value to the ecosystem? Um, having a go-to place where anyone within and without the Cardano network can suggest ideas for events can be vote that can be voted for, expanded on, foster, which will be fostering idea generation, collaboration, and the actual manifestation and holding of events. Um, so the objectives are attracting new people to Cardano Catalyst, creating a simple way to bridge interaction between Cardano Catalyst stakeholders and everyone new to the community, creating a framework that allows for fast and effective experimentation on how to create mechanisms for how to best uh, invite, incentivize people to suggest, vote on, and give feedback on events and ideas, create a creative idea generation, fair voting mechanisms, community consensus models. And this is also actually a little bit similar, I mean, um, of like the idea scale, uh, mechanisms we have there and the you know how the community can give uh, feedback and kudos and so on so i actually see i mean being active in that platform i see many things which are um uh, similar to actually the, the the project so about team and feasibility so the team has as i said at the beginning strong experience in organizing hosting facilitating online and in-person events and uh, we also um, a part of the team has created an online event management software. Um, so we're familiar with many of these, uh, you know, the, the challenges in um, event creation and management and, and so on. And we have a working demo and a prototype. Um, and we have, as I said earlier, um, some people out of the Catalyst and Cardano community that and, and some projects that want to um, pilot uh, with us. Here you can see some screenshots of the prototype and on, on the website we also have uh, different videos um, explaining different uh, use cases and all, what we want to do is now um, to um, like evaluate the the prototype we have and the features we have and so on and see what what part of the code we can use for this project um you know for tailored to uh you know cardano and catalyst um and uh, so that would be part of the of the roadmap that would be like the first second month and in parallel we will be reaching out to um to uh, more people that want to collaborate with us and uh, inside and outside the Cardano community that want to you know, pilot on, on the platform. Um, then, um, then of course, like um, doing the development and uh, launching the first uh, version, opening up for registrations and um, continuing development, getting feedback and so on and get engaging the community. And then later to have, uh, the goal would be to have one uh, a specific concrete event you so, know, suggested, voted for and organized I'm, on the platform. Uh, Simon, mm -hmm. and, uh, that's your five minutes up, sorry. So I'm trying okay. to keep it all up. Thank you, yeah, that's, that's actually it. That's actually it. Okay, cool. And that's the part of the team here. Okay. Thank right. you. So, uh, five minutes for questions, everyone. So, uh, who has got a question here? Tim, you've got your hand up this time. Is it legit? <laughs> yeah, I, um, I, I just want to uh, address a certain uh, dimension to it that I've kind of found recently, and that's like oftentimes uh, we want to to emphasize number one in your list, which is attracting people to Cardano. And I see a lot of. Uh, problems like in the spaces, uh, certain spaces like food safety, many, many players, but you just, uh, they don't know Cardano and reaching out to them one by one is extremely time consuming. So do you have uh, the A, the technology and B, like maybe follow-up plans on how we can create these meetings where we're actually 
uh, not just reaching out internally, but actually making an equal uh, extension out into the general community. Thank you. Yes, thank you for that question. So, um, so the idea would be to actually have I mean, in, in the first phase when, we, when we're still developing to reach out to, um, to people, as I just mentioned, but then once we have the platform to kind of uh, make it like Cardano, not Cardano, like make it public and open so anyone could, could join and also give feedback and have like some exchange, some forum there. So people who actually don't know anything could come, come there and, and kind of get a good uh, foot into the door by you know, asking questions or having maybe an idea of um, creating an event they're interested in, but maybe they don't know, they could be doing that you know, within the community and there, there are other stakeholders and um, other projects they can uh, collaborate with. So that's kind of the idea uh, in the second phase. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other sort of questions uh, coming in? Anyone? Uh, John. Okay. Uh, yes. Do you have any, like, it would be great if you could integrate with Metaverse where everyone can just come in and out and just watch the event happening. Is there any pipeline on that? Uh, not at the moment. So, and right now, the platform, the the focus of the platform is actually kind of like facility the facilitating the creation of of the co-creation of the event. You know, whether it could I mean could be in person, it could be online. You know, and um, so and actually, the holding of the event would be like a separate level. You know, and we're not thinking about this at the moment. I've received, of course, ideas about this, uh, but um, and maybe in the future, but not not at the moment. No. Felix. Thank you. Because uh, I know there are a bunch of groups already which are hosting amazing community events in deep communication, coordination, and collaboration in the ecosystem. And did you include them in the ideation of this platform as well? Because you're speaking about collaboration, right? Yes. No, um, not as much as I would like, uh, I would have liked to, because of like, time restriction on, on my side, unfortunately. So, um, but there's like three, four people projects I, you know, I, I am like in light touch with and I would like to include more, but I haven't um, included them as much as I would like to. And, but this is the hope like for the coming months then um, to, you know, to, to do that more. Yeah, thank you. But that's, that's a great reminder, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, and Simon has been coming along to Eastern Town Halls and talking about uh, a, a, a little bit, and we've been discussing it in a while. So um, here, my question for you is around, uh, so your initial plan is really just to do, is to do the crowdsourcing of events and try and service those demand for particular types of events. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Yeah, okay, cool. And... Um, no, any other questions for people out there? Anyone else? No? Uh, yeah, maybe. Um, you mentioned you do some events in East Africa. What do you mean with East Africa? Yes, so this, this comes actually from some of the previous um, town hall meetings I was involved in. So then, you know, we have some, uh, uh, some, some group from, from, uh, from the Cardano uh, community east africa and then australia and then indonesia that um just said you know we're interested in in your project if you have this platform we'd like to use it um for um you know for managing or for like um or co creating the events or getting you know, more feedback on the event uh on the events they're doing anyways or they're planning anyways okay Great, that's your time up for Christian. Thank you, Simon. Uh, so, Min, thank you. Have, uh, have another shot, shall we, at uh, uh, your presentation if you want to start? Yes, uh, I'm just really sorry. I Wi Fi is suddenly shut down. It's kind of awkward. Yeah. Uh, that, that's all right. We fully expect things to break here uh, and th you know, plans to change a little bit. So, uh, when you're ready, uh, I've got your screen up so you can uh, start now. Yes, off you go. Client timer starts. Okay, I'll, I'll start now. Um, hello, everyone. We're from Vietnam and we're the two main rebuild team. 
a little bit background on the um, in fun six we're developing our products cause the two main filter to drop out and qualify products in, in qualified proposal in catalyst and our fun seven mission is to improve uh, more of our products and involve the technology developments also integrating the community so our team consists of four people called the core team mr duke tiger the founder of our projects me Hyojin and Huygun, also our dev team, which is currently working in Japan. So we set our problems is that the number of proposals is increasing by each month and the information volume is also increasing. We can calculate that average of 500 words per each proposal. And each user uh, on Catalyst who, who is reading the proposal, they have different backgrounds on languages and professions. And it could take you 25 days to read more than 700 proposals if you spend an hour per day. So our old solution mechanism is to actually have the data from Catalyst, importing them to our two-minute filter and cleaning out the unqualified proposal, um, then transfer it to CA2 for assessing and finally come out with the results. And one of the major problems is that these results is not reached out for people outside of our community of two-minute rebel yet. And if people outside who want to approach the information, they didn't have much access. So that's why we built on the new solution mechanism to actually uh, compiling three functions of importing, cleaning, assessing to make it less time consuming in one app. And with this data here, we can actually process it and displaying back to the app for users, or we can get this data to broadcasting to more people outside of our community to actually uh, get no more of our proposal. Um, so you can see that in the second, uh, model this higher scalability, more time efficiency, and the result could be informed of multi channels. That's why in Tumen Review, this one seven, we're making three proposals one for our app, and the two ones for the um, social media. Uh, once you, uh, by Vietnamese voice is for the Vietnamese community, and the voice for busy voters is for the speaking community, English speaking community. Um, so first, introduction on the um, platform. So one of the one of the advantages of using this is that it has the interaction enhancement by our UI design and the security, and it has the scalability to be decentralized. And it can be made into multilingual features, um, like for example, Malaysians, Indonesia, or other Asian countries. Um, so it is also community based because users can have connection and give feedback for us and it is also non-profit um, this is our roadmap but you can read on more proposal it's kind of lengthy but in general it's have six stages the first one is initiate a proposal uh, build a system back end coding front end coding ui app coding uh, create a launching app and feedback with updates um, we make a KPI summary here. Uh, you can read also in your proposals. Uh, we make a metric score from one to five based on the percentage of our criteria here, which we have five of them. Um, the number of downloads and registration, active accounts, user satisfaction, platform sustainability, and risk management. You can also find more information about role tasks, forecasting graphs, measurement method, how we do it, formulas and ratio in our proposal. Uh, so we're calling for $12,298 uh, um, for this app. And so extending to the other proposals, uh, we're giving the problems uh, on our own uh, mechanism, how we, we how we define the results be approached to by anyone. So we actually set our solutions is that uh, we address the challenge by making YouTube videos and podcasts that is less than two minutes to our community. And this is made before the, uh, the deadline of the fund so people can uh, approach to the information and cash a vote. Um, our production process is to take 25% of qualified proposal, processing them, making articles, turning them into videos and uploading them to our social media channel. Um, so the video making process to be more specific is uh, taking article from the community and revealed by core team and then turning them into scripts once again, reviewed by the core team and our final videos made by us. We also include some technology like FDAI or speech travel to uh, automatically, um, you know, like text to speech function to make it faster uh, with also the videos framework. Uh, our KPI for these two um, pro 
proposal is average view duration, average percentage view, and new subscribers. I mean, that, that, that's the five minutes up. So uh, if yeah. we can have any sort of question, any questions from everyone, that would be great. You got five minutes on questions. Thank you. Anyone yes. uh, got questions going? You want to talk? Or, uh, John, you want to go? Yes. Um, there, you would review the proposals and submit YouTube videos. And yes. there are, this round has about over 900 proposals. I'm assuming next uh, fund eight will be way more than this as well. Yeah. How do you have the manpower to do them? Yeah, this is um, the actually usual question that we get from everyone is how do you deal with the massive amount of proposal? Um, so if you follow the human review in Fund 6, we build a spreadsheet based tool to actually drop and qualify projects out within two minutes. It's actually a really fast process if you're doing it consistently. And we have a lot of people uh, which are doing it now. And like all the results of that. Um, so in order to deal with even more massive proposal in the future, we'll actually include uh, the process of machine learning, for example. Um, it's on text teams to actually automatically drop our unqualified uh, proposal. But the two main apps, the main focus is, is to enhance the user experience. So they evaluate the proposal themselves. So they get to know that what is the pro and cons of the project. So they can actually catch a vote for themselves. And for people who is not using the app, they can take the data from the users who is actually a Mac already. So that's like a huge community which using the app. So at the end of the day, we have the data, we can inform them. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Any other questions, Tim? Off you go. Yeah, I'm wondering how revenue trickles down to the users. Uh, because uh, I guess the CAs get paid per review. Uh, is Do they get still get the full funds for the review? Or is there a model of a, a, a money flow as it goes from the Cardano system to the to the reviewer? Um, I, I think that uh, for this question, we're actually working out with Catalyst. If, if our project is impactful enough, we can um, you know, build a bridge there. And unfortunately, um, the CAs which work on our Looks like we've lost them again. So, <laughs> have we? Oh dear, we have. Oh, that's a shame. Okay, but uh, yeah, two minutes left, and uh, that's the way it goes. We've <laughs> raised them again. Okay, thank you very much, everyone, uh, for for presenting. That's really cool. It was, uh, turned out to be more than we expected, but that's brilliant in terms of everyone coming in and presenting. I think that's wonderful. Really, really nice. Um, we're coming up to almost two hours or anything on going on. So uh, does anyone want any specific questions for anyone that's sort of been presented here? Then we can just have an open discussion. Oh, Min, you froze again. <laughs> yes. Oh, sorry. Uh, Tim, did, did you hear my answers? Or I can answer again. You can answer you now, but it won't be recorded uh, because you know, we'll have to cut it off. But you can answer away anyway. Go, go ahead and answer. Um, so, uh, like back into Tim questions about the uh, CAs really be paid. Um, I think that in in for the future, if our projects is impactful enough, uh, we can bridge into Catalyst and you know finally make a deal of um, people using our apps could be paid as normal as people using CA tools today. Yes, that's mm -hmm. something we will be uh, questioning in the future and working that out. Okay, yes. thank you. Any other questions okay. for Min quickly before I stop the recording um, on that and then we carry on? Anyone? No? Okay, I'm going to stop the recording now. So don't say anything uh, enlightening uh, or wise or anything else like that because it won't be recorded. <laughs>